So we are very nearly there with vectors. I'm not sure if you'll be pleased about that. I love vectors. So we're trying to do reflections of points in planes now. So this is about thinking about, hmm, how do we describe this? Um, it's just kind of like three dimension reflections, really. Three dimensional reflections of stuff that you would have done from like when you were in primary school and you draw a mirror line and you reflect something over. We're now talking about things in 3D, which to be honest is how most reflections take place. I mean, since when do you reflect something on a piece of paper? Most reflections you see is looking in a mirror, which is obviously a 3D kind of reflection that we've got there. So we've got those same kinds of properties of things that we're going to be having. So we've got a plane with this particular equation that we've got here. We've got a point with this particular coordinate that we've got here. And the first thing we're going to do is find the shortest distance between uh, the point and the plane. Well, we know how to find the shortest distance between the point and the plane. We know that the shortest distance is going to be, well, this is my n1, n2, n3. This is my minus d, because it's on the wrong side of the equation. And this is my alpha, beta, and gamma that I've got there. So the shortest distance is the modulus of alpha n1, which is just 1 times 1, plus beta n2, plus gamma n3, plus d, which is minus 5, all divided by the modulus of 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 2 squared. So what's that? That's 6, 7, minus 4, minus 5. So it's minus 2, but we take the modulus of that, so it's 2. And it's all over 8, 8, 9, root 9. So it's 2 over 3. So that's part A. Easy. Two marks, okay? And now it says the point of Q is the reflection of the point P in pi, capital pi. Find the coordinates of the point Q. Okay, I'm going to just add a couple of things to my diagram here. Bearing in mind they wouldn't normally give you a diagram. If I was going to be drawing this myself, I would have probably said plane, and then I would have said point and point like this, and I would have said here is P, here is Q. And to indicate it's a plane, I sometimes do like like dashed lines on the top of it to try and give it a sense of it being three-dimensional. It's obviously not super three-dimensional, but drawing stuff like this doesn't help our brains. This is the idea of trying to like simplify it. We're looking at it square on here. Now, if, it's a, um, if this is the shortest distance for the reflection, we know that this is at right angles, obviously. Okay. The next scenario we do is when it's not going to be at right angles. So Q is going to be immediately on the other side. Now, it's tempting to think that part A of the question is going to be our friend. And it could be, but I think it's way more demanding. We know that the distance between here and here is 2 over 3. And so it makes us think, OK, well, I know the distance on the other side is going to be 2 over 3. But just bear with me for a second, because it's actually not going to be the most efficient method of us solving this problem that we've got here. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this into a different kind of problem. OK, I'm going to, to do this reflection problem. I'm going to change it from a reflection question to an intersection of a line and plane. Because you can kind of see that happening, can't you? There's... So we find the vectors on one, the plane, the plane, the plane. Exactly. Good. You can find out, how do I go from here to the plane, P to M, and then how do I go from M to Q? They're going to be the same vector because of that. So with vectors, as you might expect, Distance is not as useful because distance has had so much information like deleted by taking the magnitude. Whereas if you can keep everything in vector form, you never lose any of that like important information about direction. So often the uh, distances are not as useful. So we're going to change it to an intersection of a line and a plane. Well, the equation of the line, um, you should be able to tell me what you think the equation of this line is. What do you think the equation of... This line is here, which I'm going to call L. What's the equation of the line? So it's going to be R equals, the first bit's easy. So we've got 1, 3, minus 2. What's the direction of that line? Good. The direction of this line is the normal. We know that the normal is perpendicular to it. Okay, So I can say that that's my normal. So it's just going to be 1, 2, 2. So it's 1, 2, 2. So this is my equation of the line. 
And we know already, I'm just going to copy it out though, the equation of the plane is r dot 1, 2, 2 equals 5. Okay, and remember this, the strategy that Sam said was, oh, well, I know the vector from P to M is the vector from M to Q. We're actually going to push that strategy even further, so just wait to see what happens. What do you think I'm going to do? How do I find intersections? Substitute. Substitute this into the dot product. So you end up with 1 plus lambda, 3 plus 2 lambda, and minus 2 plus 2 lambda, dotted with 1, 2, 2 to give you 5. So that's 1 plus lambda plus 6 plus 4 lambda minus 4 plus 4 lambda is equal to 5. So that's 9 lambda equals 2. Have I done that right? Yeah? yeah. 1 plus 6 minus 4. Here's me using a calculator because it's after school. So lambda is 2 over 9. So the temptation is to now go down Sam's method of saying, great, well, I'm actually going to find out what is the coordinate m. Then I can find out the vector pm, and then I can find out what q is. But I'm wondering if anyone can spot what might be an even more efficient method for taking me to the coordinate q. Double the value of Good. Double the value of lambda. lambda so here, seven, we I know the, the value of lambda at this point is 2 over 9. What's the value of lambda at p? Zero. Good, because it's where it started off. When lambda is 0, we've just got p. So we know that when we get to q, the value of lambda is going to be 4 over 9. And then you can use that to problem solve. If they said q is the point on the other side of the plane as a reflection, but the, di the distance is doubled, then you could say, great, I know it's going to be 6, six over 9 lambda. So all I now need to do to find out the coordinates of Q or the position vector of Q, the position vector of Q, well, it's on the line, so I'm going to use this. But instead of lambda, I'm going to say, sorry, instead of lambda is 2 over 9, I'm going to say that lambda is 4 over 9. So when lambda is 4 over 9, I'm going to get 1 plus 4 over 9, 3 plus 8 over 9, and minus 2 plus 8 over 9. So that is 13 over 9, uh, 35 over 9. Is that right? 27 and 8. And then that's minus 16 plus 8 and minus 8 over 9. Hang on a second. That's not right. Um, minus 18 plus 8. Minus 10 over 9. So the coordinates of Q <coughs> are 13 over 9, 35 over 9, and minus 10 over 9. Can I just multiply them all by 9 to give um, a nicer looking thing? No, because no, it's a coordinate, it's a position. If you change, multiply it by 9, it's gone somewhere completely different. Okay. So I liked how we started off with this. The strategy seemed to be about, like, let's do some stuff with 2 thirds. Then we said, let's play around with vectors. And then we said, let's play around with the parameter instead. And that became a way, way nicer way of doing this, OK? Um, obviously, if you found out the distance between m and q, it would be, it's still going to be the same shortest distance that we've got there. OK, let's separate this one.